The Tennessee Titans have a new general manager. We're opening up the Peacock and Williamson mailbag questions about Sean Payton, his future. How good of a coach is Sean Payton? Reopening the, redebating the Herbert versus Tua stuff after both teams exited the playoffs. All that and more coming up on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is what we do. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Okay, we got a lot of great questions from our listeners and yeah, let's dig in. those of you out there on YouTube. Appreciate it. Make sure you are. Uh, subscribed up to the Locked On NFL channel on YouTube. And, of course, you can find Peacock and Williamson on all of your podcast platforms. Uh, the big news of the day before we hit those questions, Matt, is the Tennessee Titans have hired a general manager. He comes from the team I cover, the San Francisco 49ers, Rand Carthon. Um, he is a, a f- football family guy. His dad was uh, a former NFL guy. Mm-hmm. Player is he coach. Maurice's brother? Uh, son. Son, okay. okay. Yes. Wow, that yes. makes me feel old. Wow. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so Rand, <laughs> uh, Rand was a, a, a running back at the University of Florida, brief stint in the NFL, and then has okay, uh, you know, gone through the ranks with the 49ers. Uh, on the pro personnel side was the player, the director of player personnel was his most recent title. He went through some interviews last year, and now this year, again, a lot of teams requested to, hire, to interview both uh, Adam Peters and Rand Carthon from the 49ers organization Rand Carthon gets the Tennessee Titans job and uh something I didn't realize right away was there were some connections with his dad and uh Vrabel way back in the day as well so there's some intertwinings there that might have been where the introduction was made and there's almost always some connection with GMs and head coaches when those hirings happen the more I think about it Maurice played for Parcells and Belichick was on staff and Mm. they're all family you know and Rabel's part of the family too okay now I'm getting it okay yeah that's right Maurice was back with the those Giants teams right yep 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 and it's hard and we we go through this uh every time someone gets hired or there's interviews and stuff it's hard to know exactly because Rand Carthon wasn't a guy that was you know at the podium a lot uh, mm-hmm. He's not somebody where we know the inner workings of just how things are going in the 49ers front office. But when you look at their roster, you think I probably need some piece of that because they did something right building this roster. But it's also right. a really, really, really difficult roster and team building process to emulate because they've done things in a in a non-traditional way. So uh, I, I would say what they're looking for from Rand Carthon is the. How does everybody work together aspect? And seeing as how things went with the Titans and John Robinson getting fired, I have a feeling that's a big part of this whole equation for the Titans with Vrabel not wanting to be to take on a new job of being also GM and head coach. Right. Essentially, that's a lot of work, but he wants to be able to work with the guy and know that that GM is going to go get him the pieces he wants and not take the pieces that he wants to keep away. So my take on it is I've been told that he is a fast riser, you know, I mean, like, boy, this guy's pretty talented. You know, he's moving up quicker than the average bear. I mean, this guy's bright and he is advancing in this, this league very quickly. Uh, he has some connections. Good for him. I don't you know, blame him one bit for using them. My original thoughts with the connection though, were I bet Vrabel likes the Niners. Give me one more D lineman, you know, theory, <laughs> you know, the one in doubt, just take another D lineman. We'll rotate them in. I'll make it work. I don't care what shape size they are. I'm going to make it work. Give me one more D lineman. But more importantly, and I've prom- we've promised reader or listeners that we're going to talk Purdy at some time. I think the the Titans must recognize we are not going to ha- be a high level quarterbacking team for the next couple of years. I mean, no matter what happens, unless Malik Willis uh, it gets an epiphany, you know, I mean, he's going to take time, or the guy's not there. Tannehill's declining. 
we can't be trading away AJ Browns. We need five of them. <laughs> we, we need what the Niners have. Need more AJ Browns. <laughs> right, 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 right. Give me a bunch of them and a bunch of D linemen, and I'll take my chances. How about this, Matt? The 49ers are going to be taking phone calls maybe about one of their young quarterbacks in the offseason, and the Tennessee Titans need a quarterback, and yeah. nobody knows those quarterbacks better That's as far as GMs around the NFL go than now Rand Carthon, who's the new GM of the Titans. Interesting. Could you imagine Lance and Willis being the two quarterbacks in Tennessee? You know, yeah. that's uh, I can imagine it. I'm not saying what the prices is or all that. Yeah, yeah there's a lot to – and look, the, the Titans are picking at 11. There might mm-hmm. not be that top quarterback sitting there for them at 11. So right. you have to weigh, right. okay, what could we do trading, trying to trade for uh, or sign a quarterback that's out there? Or we have to trade up and how much that costs future first rounders and things like that, which Rick also just went through with the 49ers. So there's probably a lot of insight there about how you get your quarterback. Uh, and, and maybe Rand Carthon's like, oh, we'll just take one in the seventh round and then we'll be good. Uh, <laughs> which, is, which is part of the thing. Like, how do you how, how do we you do it? Right. How do you emulate what the 49ers did? Spend three first round picks on a quarterback. Now you get a seventh rounder that's leading you into the playoffs. Even better. Yeah. Uh, you draft historically well in rounds five through seven. Can you teach that? Should, should you expect to be able to do that? I don't know, but I think it's more about the uh, listening to everybody in the room, everybody working together, the cohesion that we've seen in the 49ers front office. I think number one thing, that's what Rand Carthon wants to bring to the Tennessee. Okay. That's great insight. Again, these guys are hard for us to comment on. If they're with the team, you know, best, it's obviously a little easier Take that a step further. We're really speculating Lance, the Titans, things like that. Oh. But yeah, of course. But there is a connection and there's a need. Well, um, <laughs> similar style as Willis. And I don't have it in front of me, but I bet there's significant cap savings moving on from Tannehill. Even just cutting. Yes, yes, absolutely. And he will be available to other teams in trade. Will that be a cut situation? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so a lot to be decided. It's funny because there's such a different mindset for teams right now there's teams preparing for really really big playoff games and then there's teams that are like hiring coaches and gms and starting to prepare their draft board getting ready to go down to mobile alabama for the senior bowl and it's full-on off-season mode getting their off-season plans together and so it's funny when i think like these two weeks are the weirdest time of the whole league year yeah because then there's teams like titans probably going are we good or not you know (laughs) do we have to blow this thing up or not or the bucks just get eliminated and there goes Brady. We might as well trade Godwin and Evans and Vea. You know, like, I just think it's the weirdest two weeks of the season. And how difficult is it for the teams that are in the playoffs? Because they have the good right. coaching staffs and the good teams, and teams want to want to hire and interview those guys. Deme- Speaking of the 49ers, D'Amico Ryans has to prepare a game plan for the Cowboys. He had four <laughs> right. head coach interviews this week. Right. It's... Every opening, he had an interview for. Uh, all the, the And they're not half-hour in- interviews. <laughs> The co- I, I think it must be a really cursory sure first Zoom, but... interview where the team comes to you or uh, virtual interviews now is mm-hmm. probably a big part of that. And then, you know, but if, if you make it to the Super Bowl, then that week before the Super Bowl, you have time to fly somewhere, maybe have a, an official face to face interview. If you pass the first round, I would have to imagine that's the way it goes, because you got a game plan and you got to sleep sometime a little bit if you're one of these guys there's the cowboys Steichen and uh, Kafka and Gannon. So there's multiple assistants that have head coach interviews while they're trying to prepare to win a playoff football game yeah to me that's part of the super weirdness of when the regular season ends is the most desired candidates are the busiest ones you know like i only have so many hours in a day i'm trying to win a super bowl here i'm trying to beat the cowboys etc cetera, etc cetera. and pre-covid before i ever heard knew what a zoom call was i mean a, a head coach interview was come spend the night we'll do dinner we'll have yeah. lunch i mean it's a, and if they it's like a, you they don't want you to get you on the plane right <laughs> sign so this you know, like right, yeah, yeah. The experience in some cases crazy there's been there's been head coaches that got hired never went back home and like didn't have their clothes or a suit for the right right the press conference because they stayed the interview became now this is my new home and i've got to figure out how to get my stuff here with me because i'm yeah. not leaving hey you, you tell the some assistant who you just met you know I'm a double X and this is my pant size. Can you give yeah. me a suit? You know, while, while I figure out somewhere to sleep tonight and maybe call an offensive coordinator and meet the quarterback. And, you know? Oh yeah. Oh, geez. It's, it's a whirlwind. The oh, NFL is nuts, man. And it never sleeps. And that's why we have fun doing this. And show. you wonder why there's bad coaching hires too. I mean, right. like, I don't think IBM gets a CEO that way. Does IBM yeah. even exist still? I don't even know. <laughs> that's how old I am. Exactly. Right? And then you think about these coaches that do go to the Super Bowl, and someone gets hired from that, coaching staff now they're behind the eight ball because not only was it hard for them to interview and figure that out now all the coordinators and other hires are being 
being uh, made for other teams. And so now you're not even getting your first pick of the guys you wanted to hire because other new coaches are hiring all the other, you know, up and comers around the league. So you're, yeah. you're behind when you do get that job because your team did so good that you're on right now. I mean, it's night and day different, but when I got hired by Akron as the director of football ops, I mean, obviously recruiting was a big thing I was going to do. I watched the tape. I'm going, you know, that type of dude. We had like two or three weeks to build a 25 man recruiting class and had like no one committed. I didn't even know where the library was, you know, like I, I couldn't tour people on campus. So we made it fun. We're like, we're all going to learn together. Come join us at Akron. And we're going to learn about this place together. And we put a class together. You know, I, I'm gonna guess that class was not ranked uh, in the top. We didn't beat well, Bama that year. In the yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one other tiny story just dawned on me, though. Chuck Noll was hired the day before they drafted Joe Green. Like, <laughs> I know that's wow. a million years ago, but yeah. first day on the job, you have the third pick of the draft or whatever Green was. <laughs> Go get the, the franchise changing player. All right. Yeah. Got it. It's still nuts, but it's even more streamlined now than it was back then. Back right, then, right, right. it was just like, oh, I don't know. There's, We've been out on the road. You see a player that uh, – you might see a prospect that another team didn't see at all. Doesn't even know his oh, name. Joe Green was one of them. It was the <laughs> North Texas State. I mean, this town apparently went crazy. Like, you passed on people from real schools to draft this guy? Who's this Chuck Knoll guy? Yeah, turns out he knew a little something. Yeah, and they win four Super Bowls in six years. So. Great job. All right. <laughs> anyway. Speaking of hires. That, yeah, yeah. Speaking of hires. One of the big fish out there right now is Sean Payton. How yeah. much do you know about Sean Payton? Is he that good? Is he that worth it for a team? We'll get to that and tons of other things coming up next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. You've heard us talk about this mobile game app, and I can't tell you how much fun we've had competing against my fellow Locked On NFL hosts and I did not come in first place. I believe it was uh, one of the Chiefs hosts that, that, that won our competition here hmm. of trying to build the best dynastic roster on Ultimate Football GM. But well, now it's your turn to compete. More on that later. Ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM, managing your own football franchise? Well, your dream has come true with Ultimate Football GM. Manage every aspect of your team. Draft, free agency, the ups and downs of a season. You're hiring the right coaches and coordinators, and coordinators putting, putting together the right scheme for your franchise. All in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go. Play as you want to. And soon for Locked On listeners, Ultimate Football GM will be hosting a special competition where you can win amazing monthly prizes. Stay tuned for the details in upcoming episodes. Listeners will get a 100% free boost to their franchise as well using promo code Locked On inside of the game. That is promo code Locked On when you're in the game, in the game store. You can use promo code Locked On for 100% free boost. Download the game. Just visit ultimate-gm.com. Look it up on the app stores, ultimate-gm.com, ultimate football GM. Start your dynasty today. Thanks again, everybody, for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network every single day. Just another reminder, subscribe up on YouTube to the Locked On NFL channel. Not only is it the home of Peacock and Williamson, you got the Locked On NFL Podcast, NFL Key Predictions every Friday. Uh, Monday, local insiders cover the weekend with the game-to-game -game episodes. Locked on NFL available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. One more quick note on the hiring of Rand Carthon, Matt, and the 49ers are doing a really good job. And again, this is another process that's like where the, the minority hiring process is, is working in the league. I don't know if that's why this is happening, but the 49ers have three third round comp picks this year yeah it's amazing robert sala um martin mayhew this is not the first gm that's been hired out of this regime either martin mayhew with the washington commanders as gm now Rand carthon then mike mcdaniel in uh in miami so the 49ers have a whole bunch of comp picks for developing minority head coaches and gms and might have another one on the way with D'Amico ryan's so when you look at the 49ers who don't have that first round pick it's the final payment for that trey lance trade up in the first round this year, they traded their second, third, fourth this year, fifth next year for Christian McCaffrey. So the 49ers don't have a top 100 pick, but right about pick 100 when those comp picks hit at the end of the third round, the 49ers will have 10 draft picks. They've yeah. got comp picks in round five, round seven. Uh, so they've got three thirds, three fifths, three sevenths, and a sixth round pick right now. And it might even have more coming on the way. So when you look at what the That's 49ers amazing. have done and trading for Christian McCaffrey, he, you could almost argue that 
they got a free Christian McCaffrey for all the comp picks and all the developing they've done inside the organization just about. Yeah, that's tremendous. And um, I'll be honest. I mean, one of my favorite things and one of the things I look at really smart organizations is the usage of comp picks, the creation of comp picks. The Ravens have been masters for years in a different way. They let, they draft well. They let their guys go. They just keep bringing in picks, saves on salary cap space. Boom, there's another third. And it made me crazy. I mean, like when, when comp picks came around, they weren't tradable up until like two or three years ago. So like your Niners, for example, are going to have a bunch of picks clustered together. Well, it'd be nice to say, man, I really like this guy in the second round. Can I move these together? Well, finally you can. The NFL is a little slow on that. I'm like, what's the difference with these? Why can't I trade them? I mean, right. it, it made no sense to me. But I love the comp pick game. It's one of my little side projects I like to pay a lot of attention. And, and you still have to be good making the picks. We saw the Rams oh, sure. do this where they traded away all their first rounders. And then we've seen the ugly side of it where uh, they didn't really get that much impact mm -hmm. from all those comp picks they had been collecting. But it's a smart way to do it. And if you're going to not have a lot of picks, at least have uh, – uh, if you're not having high picks, at least have a lot of volume of picks to try sure. to get. And the 49ers, that's one of the big differences in, in their team right now is they've been historically good in those mid-round, late-round mm -hmm. um, with those picks. So – and even the best of drafters aren't going to hit two out of three. You know what I mean? Like right. volume's yeah. important. Just keep taking bites at the apple. And, mm -hmm. you know, even your Niners that look like they're doing a great job, they may have three years in a row that are horrible. You know, I mean, it's yeah, just how it happens. You know? a, lot of, uh, a lot of my Locked On 49ers listeners, their response is, what, just trade all the threes for even more fifth rounders because we're so good in the fifth round. Like, <laughs> that's well, your specialty. That, that's I our wheelhouse. Huh? I would bank on that every year. It's pretty, right. it's pretty rare with the 49ers to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, uh, moving on. Speaking of trading draft picks, how about – how about Sean Payton? Yeah. What do we, we, we've got multiple questions in the mailbag about Sean Payton. And of course he's the, he's sort of the whale of a, of a head coach candidate for a lot of football teams, but he's not going to be cheap. And traditionally, I mean, we're talking a couple of first round picks is what it's cost traditionally for a big time head coach. Mm -hmm. And the, the New Orleans Saints still have Sean Payton's rights this offseason. Now, if it goes into the next offseason, from what I understand, the Saints would not get compensation if somebody hired Sean Payton. So if Sean Payton goes somewhere, he's going to get draft picks uh, or the Saints are going to get draft picks for him mm -hmm. and you got to pay him a whole bunch of money. Is he that good? Is he that much better than other head coach candidates? Because I want to go to James in the uh, who a listener who tweeted this out this week. He says, how sure are we Sean Payton is a great coach? Winning percentage is good. Not great with the Hall of Fame quarterback. Bounty gate. Cap mess and weird Taysom Hill obsession. Seems like media guys just love his dude factor and charisma. What does he do to get labeled as an offensive genius? Just dagger and, and white cross? So great question from James, who's just throwing some shade at Sean Payton right now. This might be a long conversation, but I'm going to go on a little diatribe here. Um, I guess a couple of my buddies told me that Payton had a great interview recently because he's in the media now. I mean, rarely, or I mean, and, and I was very honest about what he's looking for in his next job. And I, I'm going to go look that up at some point today. Um, I believe that there are 15 to 20 people on the planet that know how to win in the NFL and more developing every year. A couple are retiring every year. He's definitely one of them. I also think he is on the Harbaugh, Tomlin, Carroll, uh, you know, layer of Hall of Fame coaches. I think he's pretty much in at this point too. But he's not Belichick. He's not Reed. He's not Landry, Noel, Walsh. You know, what I mean, but he's a low end Hall of Fame coach. You know, so, you know, the ugliest girl to beauty pageant. You know, <laughs> and, and, but he is more resume to write. So these are things I know about him. Is Yes, having Breeze is wonderful. Having Brady, having Ben is wonderful. Having Wilson in his prime, having Lamar. I mean, with all those coaches, it's not an accident that you get that quarterback head coach combination. It's hard to beat. Um, a couple of years ago, I, our buddy Mike Sando put this out that anytime the Saints did not have a bottom five defense during the Breeze regime, and that probably fell off his last couple of years. They went to the playoffs. So just give me a defense that's not the worst in the league, and I'll get you to the playoffs. And that's a combination of Peyton and Breeze in his prime. Now, I do think there's a misnomer that he's just an offensive guy. He's a finesse-type coach. He's a Parcells disciple. And it's not just Kamara. They bring in the Ingram to finish games. Their front seven is big and nasty and physical. No team in the league during the Breeze regime drafted more offensive linemen and particularly interior offensive linemen to move the ball, to put teams away, 
And because Drew Brees is short, you know, he can't have a collapsing pocket with 6'6 defensive linemen with arms like Condors. So we're going to invest in centers and guards. Um, this I know for a fact is I think now this this mantle probably goes to your boy Shanny, but a very high percentage of coaches, the second that their season ended and maybe they went to the beach, but whenever they began their offseason prep, Many, many, many offensive coaches and some defensive coaches immediately studied Sean Payton's playbook. And, and give me all the Saints offensive tape. I'm going to spend weeks digging into this because this is the best stuff out there. So I think the answer is yes. And it's also possible that. And he's also led organizations. Sorry to interrupt, but not all these guys have, you know, he can be the czar. Right, right. So he can be, you, you can hire Sean Payton and know that you didn't screw up. You didn't hire Urban Meyer. And right, you never right. know what you're going to get with these other coaches. So I think there's a comfort level there. I think for fans and media, maybe you could even argue he is somewhat overrated just because he's a famous name. Yeah, because yeah, the yeah. first thing a fan is going to think of, they're not going to think of Shane Steichen unless you're in Philadelphia and you know the guy. And most of us would walk down the street. If he passed us, we wouldn't recognize him, right? <laughs> right, right. But everybody knows Jim Harbaugh. Everybody knows Sean Payton. So I mm -hmm. think there's just a, a a famous name Celebrity, level yeah. with coverage. So I could see why it would feel that way because of his coverage. And I will say that end of year, end of career Drew Brees was not prime Drew Brees either with his arm. And no. so uh, it did take some coaching up to, to make it all that work. And, and they were still a really good team. So um, while he may not be Bill Belichick, Bill Walsh, whatever, Andy Reed, he's a really good coach candidate. And I think you're, you feel so comfortable hiring him and he's probably worth it for your franchise. If you're in, in need of a turnaround because he can help you top to bottom. He's a franchise altering addition, you know, and I absolutely believe that head coaches and coaching in this sport is more important than any other. I don't know the other sports as well, but I have a feeling I could have coaxed a couple wins out of Jordan's bulls. You know what I mean? Or the Shaq Kobe Lakers, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a good. Point. <laughs> and he, he built, he, he brought in breeze too. So, Yes. You gotta give him credit for building the thing that had him have that Hall of Fame quarterback too. Yeah. And Drew Brees wasn't Drew Brees before he met Sean Payton. I mean, oh. it, it, he was fine as a charger, had an injured shoulder, was gonna sign for Miami. Uh, he failed the physical. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, they got Drew Brees. He's going to the Hall of Fame. I mean, they they grew together. Next. Is Justin Herbert getting a free pass with those Los Angeles Chargers? And why is Tua not considered in his level now? That is one of the questions coming up on the rest of today's Peacock and Williamson mailbag. Today's episode brought to you in part by our friends at betonline.net, your number one source for sports betting, information, statistics, news, and analysis this season. Get all the latest trends, every professional and amateur league out there, of course, NFL, you've got lines, you've got Super Bowl props. Uh, looks like the 49ers and Chiefs is the favorite to be the exact matchup. But you can bet on any exact matchup of the eight teams remaining in the playoffs to be playing in the Super Bowl. College hoops, women's hoops, soccer, tennis, golf, combat sports, you name it. You can find it at Bet Online, And of course, if you love sports podcasts, you can find those as well. At Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information. Head over to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more at Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Matt, I'm going to go here to a question from Hoyt. And he's asking about Herbert and Tua. And of course, they were drafted back to back in the NFL drafts. So there's always going to be debates with those guys. But he says this may come from a salty Finns to a fan, but why is Herbert? <laughs> escaping all accountability for Saturday. Undoubtedly, he's an exceptional player and was missing Mike Williams, Slater, etc. The scheme isn't helping, but uh, he goes on to say, you can kind of see where this is going, uh, but he can't make a play, can't overcome the obstacles. I can't help but wonder if that was Tua, who was behind center for that epic collapse, uh, if, he, if he would have been exiled to New Zealand. So what do you think? He's kind of projecting <laughs> a little bit being a, a Finns fan and, sure. a, and a Tua lover because I, I don't know how we would have reacted to Tua. In a lot of ways, during the whole season, we've talked about, wow, the how bad are the Dolphins without Tua? Because we've seen them without them. They need Tua to win. And, of mm -hmm. course, they still almost were able to, to win that football game. The Miami Dolphins were, but and Tua would have got him over the. So I, I think in a lot of ways, Tua has been helped by this season, 
you know, concussions notwithstanding, not knowing how that's going to work out for him in the future. But um, I don't really feel that way about the Tua Herbert thing right now. I think Tua's come a long way in that conversation with Justin Herbert. But the Herbert conversation by itself is kind of interesting. Yeah, it's really two different conversations. And you mentioned this a while back, like when Jalen Hurts was out. Does him being out help his MVP cause? Well, uh, there's a good way. That's a good way of looking at it. I mean, I certainly think Tua and Lamar as players have showed their value by not being there even more. I mean, clearly. And, you know, that's what a starting quarterback should do. But still, I mean, you really understand their value when they're not there. To me, first of all, Hoyt knows his stuff. He's He's been a follower for a long time, and he's a, a very – intelligent fan and more than that. I mean, I know he's involved with other stuff, but I think comparing Tua and Herbert is bonkers. I mean, I know they're in the same draft class. The so Finns picked Tua over Herbert. If we're building a team, Herbert's my third choice, my fourth choice. I mean, do I want Herbert or Burrow, Herbert or Allen? I mean, he's in that tier to me. He's not as accomplished as those guys, but he's that type of player in my opinion. Tua to me is... I have much higher regards for him now than I did a year ago, but I think he's knocking on the door of a top 10 quarterback where Herbert's knocking on the door of a top five quarterback. And there's a big gap in between. There's a lot of Dak Prescott's in between that are phenomenal players. So that's a big difference to me. Would two have won that game? Maybe. Uh, does Herbert deserve some blame? Everybody does. But I think the coaching staff not running the football, not making any kind of adjustments, I also think the Chargers were remarkably lucky early in the game. You know, the, every bounce went their way and, you know, they didn't keep the, the pedal down. Their lack of weapons showed up as the game went on. Allen got doubled time and time again. They didn't run the football. I will say this, though, if there's a negative on Herbert, but I think the scheme has more to do with it than the player, is he is content taking the layups. I mean, maybe there's a three-pointer to be had there. And maybe the protection's not there or the speed guy's not there, but he goes through his progressions very, very quickly. And I'll take the completion. I'll take the completion. You know, he'll death by thousand paper cuts you to death. But when Brady does that, we say it's great. When Herbert does that, we say he's not aggressive enough. I saw an overlay of the Josh Allen and Justin Herbert passing chart. Oh, I bet. <laughs> I and mean it's insane when you it's watch, like they're playing two different games i bet it's crazy and it's like with because the, they get compared to each other a lot because of their athletic ability and size and arm yeah. strength herbert Thank has way too good an arm for his passing chart to be this check down charlie looking sort of a absolutely a, a spray chart and then when you look at josh allen it's like there's dots over here dots way over here <laughs> dots over here a red dot here for an intercession red dot is just you know it's so much different um I think Allen's average depth of target this past week was like 15 yards. Usually it's like six. Seven. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, is there is there a lack of killer instinct? I, I don't think we can go that far yet with Justin Herbert, but I understand the idea of there, there should be more because of how good he was, how early and how talented he is. And But I, I think it's the eyeball test more than anything. It's, it's hard mm -hmm. to, to look at the, the box score. Because when you come, when you watch the games, and I saw the 49ers play the Chargers earlier this year, and he didn't have Mike Williams, and he didn't have Keenan Allen, right. and they still drove down the field a couple times, and he made some wow throws that guys just can't make, and they ended up not having enough to beat the 49ers. But I came away watching that game, like, man, if Herbert had this and this, look out, right? Oh, yeah. But that's kind of where it all comes from. When you watch the games, you see what he can do. Uh, I think it's, it's maybe... I, I can buy some arguments, but I wouldn't put him in that overrated category because I think he was completely let down by how his team operated, both coaching and with some of the, the weapons he had. I mean, it's kind of teasing this for tomorrow because I want to talk Purdy with you tomorrow a little bit. But if Herbert was in the Niners offense, I think we'd be talking about, is he the best quarterback on the planet? You know what I mean? Like, Scary, things like that. Right? Yeah, I mean, like, is he better than Mahomes? Is he better than Unitas? Is he better? You know, is he that good? And I think there's about five superheroes at the quarterback position right now, and he's one of them. Right. Yeah. It's 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 Mahomes, Allen, Herbert. Burrow has he, a different superpower. I mean, he, he he's in there for sure. Um, <laughs> pick it. Uh, so, yeah, and Trubisky, pick it. Yeah, boy go. Trubisky. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, I, and I know you want to grill me a little bit on the on the Brock Purdy stuff, so maybe we'll get into some of that. And of course, that we're going to preview tomorrow, all the games. Yeah. Um, Explosivo had a question here. He says, what do you guys see as the key matchups on each side of the ball for the games this coming weekend? Well, you are in luck because Friday's episode, we'll get into all of that and make Absolutely. all the picks for all of these 
divisional round playoff games. Thanks for all the questions, everybody. Some really good ones. Apologies to those that we did not get to your question. You can keep dropping those in for next week's mailbag, or maybe we'll get a question, get to a question. We have less picks to make now in the playoffs. Right, right. So extra time on Thursday's episode at BD Peacock on Twitter at Williamson NFL, or drop a comment. And of course, subscribe on the locked on NFL channel to this on this podcast on youtube and of course peacock and williamson available on all of your podcast apps thanks everybody for making us your first listen matt and i back tomorrow right here peacock and williamson